He is an environmental scientist also, an environmental rights advocate and founder of Kisumu Bike Club. Mm -hmm. Karibu sana, Ivan. Thank you so much. Glad to have you with us. I'm glad to be here. All right. Yeah, huh? so, so let's talk. Tell yeah. us. Uh, what what do you do as an environmentalist for someone who's just who just knows that as a profession but doesn't really know what what you mm. do? All right. So thank you once again. Uh, I'm Abondo Evans, an environmentalist. Uh, quite a number of years in this particular sector. So an environment is large. Uh, environment is our surrounding. Environment is what we see every day. So. When I talk of environment, I, in a simple term so that uh, our audience can understand, mm -hmm. it's simply the lake, the land, yeah. the ocean, the atmosphere, the air that we breathe, the yeah. water that we take, uh, all that is environment. So an environmentalist is someone who actually cares for these things and is at the forefront to ensure that uh, these particular resources that we have within us are uh, conserved, they are managed, and they are sustainably utilized. Mm -hmm. So in a simple uh, term, that is what environment is all about, and that is what uh, conservation is all about. All right. Yeah, thank you. Great. Well, uh, and now you have majored on, because uh, before, before we went on air, you were telling me about how environmentalist, because environment is broad, yeah. now you choose which sector that you want to advocate for. Exactly. Let us, no, tell us what exactly you advocate for. All right. Uh, so in my sphere, I advocate for uh, a green transport uh, system within the urban centers of uh, Kenya. Uh, we know, as at now, Kenya has uh, like five cities that we are really proud of, and our cities are coming up, towns are coming up with the onset of devolution. Mm -hmm. So then uh, it is, it is uh, really hectic to maneuver this uh, through these towns. And uh, the urban centers are uh, the lead, one of the leading you know, uh, environments where pollution is happening at a faster rate with this onset of climate change. Mm -hmm. Therefore then, as uh, people who are concerned of the environment and are uh, passionate about, you know, living mm -hmm. in a well, a sufficient, sustainable, and uh, living in sanity with nature, then we opted to at least try to address the issues around transport and how can we minimize, you know, the pollution that is uh, arising from uh, the transport sector. Mm -hmm. Then that brought up uh, the need for us to even initiate uh, things like uh, cycling activities to just enable us, you know, pass that conversation of the need for uh, motorized, non-motorized uh, transport systems mm -hmm. that would now help in even mitigating uh, the effects of climate change. Okay. Um, Before we even get to now the initiative that you have there, the Kisumu Bike Club, yeah. that I understand, and we'll have pictures of that. We'll be putting them on just in a, in a little while. Right. But first, tell us, uh, what is the importance of this? Because you've talked about climate change, and last year we had COP28, yeah. and we know we are all about trying to mitigate uh, the effects of climate change and to to be ambassadors of yeah. climate change in our own different capacities. So when we talk about uh, the transport system, maybe some people don't understand um, the effect or the weight that it has on climate change. Okay. So what exactly in the transport system really affects uh, climate change? Climate change. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much, Ayet, for that particular question. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are in the era of uh, transition. And uh, globally, the, the global community is trying to transit from uh, fossil fuels to you know, sustainable energy sources. So how does uh, then transport come in? Number one, all, actually 99% of our transport systems are uh, run mm -hmm. by the fossil fuels. That talks of, talk of diesel, petroleum, talk of all these natural gases, and all that are uh, extracted from the fossil fuel. And uh, fossil fuel is the leading, actually, cause of climate change. Mm. So in simple terms, uh, climate change is actually the change of our, you know, weather patterns in the long run that uh, is different from the norm. Uh, like, for instance, uh, now in January, for instance, now yeah, we are we're seeing, seeing rain. rain all over. And people mm. are wondering, do we even have rain? Have we even had? Now, that is exactly what climate change is mm. in simple term. And this is affecting people a lot, especially in the sub-Saharan Africa. 
So you find that uh, we are having extreme floods in some areas. Like for instance, if you see, if you saw what happened uh, in the end of last year, mm -hmm. we have extreme droughts in some part of uh, uh, the country. country. Talking of the Kenyan context, we have places where the heat is just unbearable. Like for instance, in the coast, uh, we have pests and diseases that are just thriving because of the change of. They actually pests that thrive because of the change, change of. of uh, uh, yeah, like for instance, the bed bugs are really thriving in this particular knee. So those people at home, also please. Also, bed bugs are yeah. there during the. Yeah, yeah, during uh, sometimes during the rainy season, mm. but again, th there are those that thrive during hot, hot uh, temperatures. Okay. So, that is entirely what climate change is all about. So, how does transport come in? Mm -hmm. So, vehicles emit what you know as uh, black carbon. Mm -hmm. uh, black carbon is simply the fumes that come from uh, the, the exhaust fume that comes from our vehicles. Mm. And 38% uh, of uh, the cause of uh, you know climate change coming from our vehicles. And that is a huge... That's 38%. That's, that's, a, huge percent. that, that's a huge percentage of uh, emission that is affecting our, you know, the ozone layer. Mm. Because once the ozone layer is affected, then that is the, the, the old story around climate change. So then, uh, this emission from our vehicles, emission from our motorcycling sector, emission from our industries and all that, they're the major cause. So then, why... Why transport? Why green transport? And why even do we? Why are we coming up to even raise these concerns? Mm -hmm. It's because we are trying to reduce that particular usage of fossil fuel as a means to driving our economy, to driving our transport sector. So then, once we are able to try and uh, mitigate, we are able to reduce that. Then it means by a big percentage we have really reduced the carbon emission that is coming from our, our vehicles. And okay. that's why we come in. And that's why we are coming with this concept of uh, green transport. In that, instead of using vehicles that are, are being run by the fossil fuels, then why can't we use vehicles that can be run even through electricity? electricity. We can have vehicles mm. that are run by, uh, from the biofuels. We can have vehicles run by methane gas and all that. And this technology is already here with us and we need to embrace it mm -hmm. as a country. Okay, so we have seen vehicles that are, are running by um, electricity. electricity. We have seen buses yeah. uh, in town, you know, mm. you have seen one or two. Yeah. Uh, when we talk about those that are operating with methane gas or biogas, do we, do we have them in Kenya? We don't and have I, them in Kenya. Uh, in Kenya, our government is really focusing on the electric uh, buses and uh, we have quite a number of electric buses and they are, they are, they are with us here mm -hmm. and now we need to embrace them. But we don't have vehicles uh, run by, you know, uh, the biofuels. Actually, for the biofuels, it's actually something that's very new in the market. And even, I don't think it's even in, in uh, Africa yet. It's okay. just from the developed So countries. it's something that's uh, yeah, coming up. Th that's, it's coming up. But the focus currently mm. is uh, electric vehicles, and China is the leading producer of the, the electric vehicles. But again, even the electric vehicles, there's an impact they have the environment mm -hmm. so it's a whole debate it's a whole debate so, yeah, <laughs> yeah it, and i wanted it, to come it, to that yeah. how, how safe to the environment are the electric electric vehicles and we also have the hybrid uh, yeah. the electric exactly. and also operating on fuel so is that uh, also a solution when we do we say that's also mitigating it when you're not <laughs> using <laughs> okay. uh, fully, fully petrol right according to the united nations uh, sustainable goals our 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 end goal is to eliminate completely mm -hmm. our vehicles that are being fueled by the fossil fuels. That, okay. that is the end goal. Mm -hmm. So the hybrid is just uh, one that will supplement to some extent, mm -hmm. but the intention is actually to scrap away uh, fossil fuel and vehicles. Huh? Okay. And that's why there's so much uh, resources being pumped in uh, manufacturing of electric vehicles. But again, how do we come in even as mm -hmm. uh, this other, because green transport is a wide, it's actually big, yeah? and green transport is not actually only uh, the transport bit, but it involves even how you manufacture these vehicles, because even the, the electric vehicles, for instance, are using lithium-based uh, electric batteries. Yeah, and, and when it gets to yeah. the sea, then that's quite enough. Exactly. And again, the first thing is, where do we even get this lithium? Lithium is so much plenty in, in Africa, specifically Zimbabwe. Mm. But again, if you look at the communities that are harboring that particular lithium, it's again another story for uh, you know, a social injustice that is happening in, 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 in Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe and Chile. Mm. So those are the things we are trying to say. As much as we are getting to electric vehicles, then we should also consider how we are even, you know, man manufacturing these particular vehicles, these minerals that are needed in manufacturing the vehicles. Mm -hmm. And that's where now cycling comes in. Okay. Because, because you are saying uh, electric vehicles, as much as uh, they, are, they, they are helping us in mitigating effects of climate change and helping us reduce the fossil fuels, 
But we can use other options. We have cycling, for instance. We have vehicles that are fueled by, uh, you know, other means. We have vehicles that are fueled by solar. Mm -hmm. We have solar. We have, we have, uh, we have motorcycles. So, wait, you, you've said we have vehicles that are powered by solar. By solar, yeah. Uh, they're like, they're like, not in Kenya yet. Uh, Africa, not no, yet. Not okay, <laughs> because I've not seen any. <laughs> All right, uh, we are currently on electric vehicles mm -hmm. uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a as a nation and as a continent. Uh. Mm -hmm. But again, that is a challenge to us because I think Africa should also take seriously the issue of research so that we can be able to be also problem solvers and not mm -hmm. yeah, just recipients. That, that is another, an, another talk for a, another day. Okay. So, uh, why cycling now? Mm -hmm. So cycling looks at uh, three different benefits, actually four. So number one is the effect mm -hmm. of uh, the emission. So we are saying, Achagari yako nyumbani, take a bicycle, cycle to work. Like to, to work. That, that is, that's a different ideological issue that comes in. People will ask, why would I cycle to work? Mm -hmm. In fact, one of the main challenges we are tired. facing, <laughs> one of the main challenges is like, you want me to cycle to work, I'll, I'll get to work, I'm sweaty, I'm, I'm sweaty smelling and all that. Yeah. Yeah. That so is number I'm one. And then secondly, well, with this whole chaos you are seeing on the roads, how, how safe will I be even on the roads? Exactly. Those, those are the issues that are coming up uh, that we and need we to address. We have address, seen huh? uh, a lot of uh, deaths, you know, also yeah, through exactly. cycling. Through cycling. Mm -hmm. And the motorcyclists are our number one enemy on the road when we comes to cycling exactly. yeah but we are dealing with them we are dealing okay. with them okay. so uh mm -hmm. why is cycling number one uh re the reduction in on uh, emission then number two is the health benefit that comes with cycling mm -hmm. cycling has a myriad ways of uh, uh helping you as a person when it comes to your health from okay. cardiovascular to your weight to you know most metabolic rate to uh helping even in uh uh, uh, preventing cancer, cancerous disease and all that. And even the air that you breathe. Mm -hmm. Because once you're cycling, your metabolic rate is fast. Mm -hmm. So you breathe in and out. And that is so important for the, for the body. Okay, so yeah. you're, you're physically fit, your, you're your physically health is in fit. check. Yeah, yeah, but exactly. how practical is it now? Mm. Especially in Kenya, we have countries, especially in the western uh, side, that they have, you know, the, the roads designated places yeah. for, for cyclists. Yeah. So it's safe. Yeah. So how, how practical is it? For, for Kenya before even we get to, this is just normal bike, bicycles, yeah. before we get to even the electric and whatnot. Okay. So how practical is it? Uh, th that's the biggest challenge we have as a, as a nation, as a developing nation, because our focus now is how do we ensure we have plenty of vehicles. Anyone graduating from the university, their first dream is a vehicle. So tell them about cycling. They're like, hey, really? What do you mean? I've not yeah. studied since you've been riding a West Coast. You know, so that would be the so, so, Yeah, so that is the question. Uh, Amsterdam is the leading city in, in the world in terms of cycling, mm -hmm. followed by Copenhagen. Am, uh, Amsterdam is, an, uh, is in, uh, in, 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 in uh, uh, Denmark, uh, Copenhagen in Netherlands. So they are the leading city Cities. when it comes to cycling. Mm -hmm. And a bigger percentage of people there, are, including women, people are cycling to work, people are cycling to their you know, places and all that. And uh, they have this concept of bike, a bike share. Bike share is where you can just wake up, uh, go to the uh, nearby mall, take us a bicycle, cycle to town, leave it there. Uh, in the evening, you come, take another bicycle, take it, you go to your uh, place, leave it at a, a nearby mall there. So, like, yeah. bicycles are shared. Mm -hmm. So, it's an entire system uh, of infrastructural development that the, ca the, the government has uh, intensively uh, developed. And... It's funny the, the way these two actually cities, the, there's actually a uh, year, yearly ranking of uh, cities that are, are, uh, are uh, adaptive and cities that are well in terms of uh, cycling. Mm -hmm. So it's funny that those cities are actually competing to be the best in terms of uh, cycle-friendly cities. Wow, so good competition. Yeah, it's a good competition. So to answer your question, uh, governments have in, in the developed world, they've really ventured into uh, infrastructural development in terms of cycling to just favor cyclists. Eh? Mm -hmm. So when you go to a road, uh, for instance, you'll find that uh, there's a specific lane for you know, cyclists. Cyclist, yeah. There's a specific lane for vehicles. And there are roads where you cannot assess with your with a, a, a vehicle, for instance, you cannot have access with your motorcycle. Only cyclists are, are allowed within the city. Okay. So if you go to a city, for instance, if you go to Denmark, uh, a city in Denmark, you'll find places where it's only bicycles. It's either you walk or you cycle to an office, <laughs> yeah. unlike what is happening in Nairobi and other big cities in Africa. So 
it's about infrastructural development, it's about uh, changing the perspective of people, and it's about actually educating people to understand the need for us to even venture into cycling. Mm -hmm. Not as a leisure, as an item for leisure, <laughs> but an item for, for your health, as a, as, a, as a tool to even help in mitigating climate, climate change, change, as a tool to even help in uh, you know, good living, uh, good city life and all that. And, so, and so, it saves you money. Yeah, and, and it, it, it is actually, uh, actually pocket friendly. Yeah. In, in Kenya, 99% of people cycling are earning a salary of 10 Ten thousand and below. Yeah. So it looks like yeah. uh, yes. you know, in Kenya, like exactly a poor man. A poor man. Actually, in Kisumu, system. in mm. Kisumu, when you cycle to work, the perception is that uh, you are broke. Exactly. I think it's all over Kenya. It, it, it's know? all over Kenya. <laughs> but I think in yeah. Kisumu, it's worse. Yeah. At least we've seen guys, the corporate guys, cycling, <laughs> cycling. to work. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So okay. So now we <coughs> need to change that perception exactly. to get people to understand the importance of this. And so tell us now about um, your bike club and how it's working. How are you changing that? How right. you, you know, and as, as you do, maybe we can have the <coughs> pictures roll over so that we understand okay. what is happening. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, so it's funny. Uh, the bike club, Kisumu Bike Club, as we call it, mm -hmm. was uh, formed in 2020 during the corona time mm -hmm. so during corona people were locked in their houses people were locked in their those times used to call cages so mm -hmm. no one was you know out there to 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 spend time uh if you made a step then you are told where is your mask and all that so we were having our bicycles in our homes so we were wondering why why not cycle why because you've not had anyone being taken to uh, by police because they are cycling to, to so we said why can't we come together and initiate a, a, a cycling activity so that at least because of the boredom we are having in our houses spending all that time with kids in the house why don't we take our cycles, uh, bicycles and uh, exactly. begin cycling and that's how the club uh, emerged huh? so the club's intention was to first uh, mm -hmm. was, was to first uh, do what uh, break that boredom in our houses but again later on we realized actually we can use this bicycle as a tool to address many societal problems mm -hmm. with, of course, focus in environmental uh, concerns. Eh? So the bike club is a membership uh, body where people enroll as members. Once you enroll, you are given a particular reflector for safety purposes. Okay. Uh, we're actually trying to uh, mobilize people to join. <clears throat> but the biggest intention of the club is to actually develop a culture of cycling in Kisumu. As I mentioned earlier, we are trying to prevent a replica of Nairobi in Kisumu. Kisumu is emerging and is developing very quickly. Actually, it's the it's fastest developing. The, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's actually the cleanest city in, in, uh, in, in Kenya. Kenya. So yeah. we are trying to preserve that particular, you know, uh, title, right? title uh, <laughs> to prevent what is happening in Nairobi. N mm. Nairobi is actually the unsafest city in Kenya in terms mm. of cycling. Mm. Yeah, the fatalities you are seeing in Nairobi is so high, high. Yeah. So we are trying to ensure that as the city mm -hmm. is growing, Mm -hmm. We grow, <coughs> we, we grow with the, we grow with the notion mm -hmm. or with that uh, already well established city that is clean and the transport system is inclusive and reliable. So in the club, we are having different objectives. So number one is of course trying to develop that cycling culture mm -hmm. uh, uh, within the city of Kisumu and the residents of Kisumu. And then uh, secondly, we are using the, the cycling as a means for ecotourism because we realize guys during the weekends do not actually have things to do. Okay. So then what do we do? We arrange cycling please every Saturday and even in the evening mm -hmm. so that guys can just come and explore the vast uh, natural resources within Kisumu. Oh. In Kisumu, there are a lot of uh, game sites. You, they are, they are, you know, they are, they are Kajulu Hills on the other side. We have waterfalls. Mm -hmm. And you're seeing the pictures. Yeah, yeah. you see, uh, this, and these places are actually hidden. People do not even aware. Uh, uh, people are not are aware that this place exist. Uh -huh. But again, these places are not familiar to people because to assess these places, you need, you, 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 you actually have to, to, to go to those places either through a vehicle or something. But we, re we realized using mm -hmm. a bicycle to reach to this place is far much easier and cheaper and very convenient. Okay. So then we developed an ecotourism aspect where we call it a bike tour, where mm -hmm. we just uh, engage our members to cycle within uh, uh, the, uh, you know, the surroundings of uh, Kisumu to just explore. You see, Kisumu as a county is not very 
urban. Uh, it's a bit, uh, uh, the, the city itself the city is the only. Is urban, yeah, but, but a bigger urban. portion of Kisumu is rural. Mm -hmm. So what we do is uh, we cycle in these rural areas where people just go see the natural resources, see the big uh, rice plantation and, uh, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, the, the big uh, sugarcane plantation within Kisumu, and it's okay. very awesome, I mean, people enjoy. Yeah. But again, something else we are trying to pursue in, uh, <coughs> in, uh, through the bike club is we are trying to address the issue of uh, inclusive uh, transport systems. And in that, we are working very closely with the City Department of Planning, and uh, I think uh, I will applaud the city because it's very mm -hmm. rare for you to see a government body working with youths to design cities. Okay. So we're actually working with the city department of Kisumu to uh, try and design the roads in a way that they be more inclusive right. and they're more safe. Mm -hmm. So like you see this initiative, for instance, uh, it's an initiative we call critical mass. We have crit critical mass in Nairobi, critical mass in Mombasa and Kisumu. Critical so mass. Critical mass is mm -hmm. where many cyclists come together to, to ride for a common for, for a common mm, goal like how it is in the picture like how it is them. yeah so this is a critical mm. mass we did last year and it involves having uh, different cycling stakeholders coming on board to just air out uh, you know the issue of uh, cycling safety on roads because we know the perception that people have towards cycling so what mm -hmm. we are trying to promote is now that particular culture and uh, not only the culture but also trying to sensitize people on the need uh, for a safe and inclusive road telling them that, you see, this road is not only for vehicles. It's not only for the motorcycle guys. This road is for everyone, including cyclists. Mm. So please, can you mind our, <coughs> our safety in these particular well. roads? Mm. So that is what the bike club is trying to pursue. And uh, we are trying to do it. Uh, we are doing it with the city department of planning to just be able to design roads that are friendly to every road users, including pedestrians, guys using, you know, the Mkokotenia and all that. Mm -hmm. Something else we are doing is uh, we are having school, uh, school programs where we educate uh, school kids on how they utilize the roads. Okay. Because when your child is getting out, uh, is going to school in the morning and coming in the evening, you are really not sure of, of their safety. Yeah. Because some schools are placed right in front of the, of, of the highway. For instance, mm -hmm. the MM Shah Primary, it is right in front of the highway. So that is a very big risk for the, the kids that are crossing in the morning and in the evening. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we go there, form uh, cycling clubs to just uh, be able to uh, use the club as a platform to engage students and also you know, educate them in terms of road safety. How do they use the various road synergies we have? Uh, mm -hmm. how, at what point do they cross and all that? So we are having pilot project currently, working with uh, 18 schools. And what we do with these schools, we establish uh, the safety clubs, uh, which we also call cycling clubs. And then we also educate the, uh, you know, the, the guys at the gate, the, the watchmen at the gate, because they are the ones who sometimes help kids in even crossing. Awesome. So what we do is we try to build their capacity and even equip them with the road synergies and all that. So that when the kids are crossing in the morning and the evening, they are there to even give give that guidance and the protection. All right. So those are the things you're trying to pursue through the, the cycling club. I think that's an amazing initiative that you're yeah. having there, and especially that you have the support of uh, the government yeah. uh, in Kisumu. It's amazing. Yeah. So how do you see us uh, when comparing with Copenhagen as one of the cities that are doing very well in cycling? Yeah. Uh, the system that, that's there, because that's one thing that you've not mentioned from what you're, you're planning. Mm -hmm. You know, having um, a system where I can use the bike, drop it somewhere, you know, take another, get with it home. Yeah. And I've also seen that even in Dubai, it's no. not as, uh, you know, in terms of development in cycling, it's not as good as it is in mm. uh, Copenhagen. But it's, it's something that's happening. So is it possible to have that in Kenya? Or will we have a problem of insecurity? <laughs> yeah, again? actually, insecurity is the biggest, uh, it's, it's the biggest concern. For, for the bicycles. Mm -hmm. But the best approach would be to use a bicycle, uh, to, to be in partnership, huh? to be a, a partnership between uh, the government and the cycling uh, mm -hmm. fraternity. Mm -hmm. Because you might want to do it as a, as a private person, but again, you're, you'll be risking big time because people will disappear with your bicycle. What will you be? <laughs> and then secondly, the yeah. space that you need even to park. Because you know, bike, it's actually called a bike share program. A bike share program. Bike share program. Good. And uh -huh. uh, we tried initiating it in Kisumu. Mm -hmm. But uh, due to some uh, constant we had, we were, not, we were not able to pursue it. But we tried it in Kisumu. Mm -hmm. So bike share is uh, where we have like a parking lot where we just park bicycles. So in different places within the town and in the suburbs, there are specific places located for, you know, parking. parking and okay. that's where now the government comes in because you'll automatically need a public, you know, space for you to do the parking. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So 
you go to a certain area for instance if we are talking in the we are we are we are talking in the uh, space so, uh, the Nairobi space for instance we have a parking within this particular area and then another parking lot in, uh, in in say south b we have another parking lot in western so when you go to that particular particular area bicycles are, are parked there so what you do you just provide your credentials you do the payment and it's all digital uh, and okay. it's it's all automatic it's digit digitalized mm -hmm. eh? so you do your payment you take the bicycle you cycle to whatever uh, destination you're going to once you are there, you leave the bicycle at that point. You, do, you go do your, your, your whatever you're going to do. And, and then in the evening when you come back, you take another bicycle, you go. That, that's home. It's, it's very efficient. It's, it's very convenient because no one wants to buy a bicycle. No one has that time and maybe resources to buy a bicycle. Mm. That, but they would want to reach you know, their destinations in a more convenient way. Yeah. So then bike share will really uh, suffice. But again, uh, in the context of Kenya, we are still grappling with a lot of you know, mm -hmm. issues to do with security, with perception, and all those issues. Eh? So trusting people with your bicycle, but, and plus again, it's all about ownership. Because if, if the people are, 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 are willing to embrace that particular concept, mm -hmm. of course, with the notion of uh, why are we even doing this, because that is the main thing. People will do something when they see the need. Mm -hmm. But if people are not understanding the need, then, then they won't appreciate. They wouldn't appreciate. Mm -hmm. But again, it's, it's just I'd mentioned, it's all about partnership between you know, the government and the private guys, and guys like us who are in, mm -hmm. in, the, in the bicycle. So, yeah. so it's something you can work out it's with the yeah, even it's something the planning, exactly. the infrastructure but, planning. But we'll need a pilot first to, to, <clears throat> to try to see how uh, it comes up, mm -hmm. what are the challenges, what you need to work in so that now we can replicate it in other areas. Okay. But in Kisumu it will really work good because uh, still at least in Kisumu there's some sort of sun. In Nairobi, you know, the security issues in Nairobi. Little, and it's a bit congested so <laughs> it, it takes time but yeah. we're going to get there. Exactly. <laughs> Eventually. All right. Yeah. Now we have talked about, now this is, these are the normal bikes. What about, <coughs> you know, for, for people who don't want to to get tired yeah. and all that. Exactly. Now are you thinking of also incorporating the electric bicycles? uh in the in the program actually electric vehicles are here with us in mm. kenya as we speak yes we have and them. uh in nairobi for instance they are used for you know supply for uh food especially during lunch hours you'll see them so many on the road exactly. guys are guys are, are uh are using electric bike so that is really efficient and uh it's, it's really working well with people who do not feel like getting tired they want to go to work they want to beat the jam, but they don't want to sweat and all that. Then an electric bike will be good for you. Mm -hmm. But now when it comes to your health and all that, and of course the, your metabolic and uh, yeah. you know, uh, <laughs> losing weight, then this uh, pedal this cycling will be very, yeah. But again, Thank you see you. the e-bike and all that, <coughs> they're all uh, items that we import. It's an innovation from the outside world. We, we embrace it here in Kenya. Mm. And uh, you see, the, with that, then it means the, the price of those particular buses are, are, are a bit high. high. Are Currently, high. they're, they're yeah. a bit high. So people who are able to afford such are people who are uh, 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 a well, -off. Uh, well off people within our society. Mm. Yeah? Because, uh, for instance, uh, you'll get one at nearly 100 plus thousand Kenya shillings. Mm -hmm. And that is, uh, for a commoner in Kenya, that is really expensive. A lot of money. But uh, the, the other ones, uh, from 5,000, if it's a second hand, you can get... It's a new one, mm -hmm. of course, uh, talking of 20,000. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So the e-bike is a really good thing for people who do not want to get tired, do not get sweaty when going to work and all that. But for people like us who value uh, health and mm -hmm. we need to be physically fit and all that, this other cycling mode well, will be very well, efficient. Well, right. yeah. I'm thinking if Kisu, it can happen in Kisum with the hot weather and people are cycling, <laughs> then it's very possible to happen even in Nairobi yeah, exactly. and the different uh, yeah. parts yeah. Of, of Kenya. So yeah. as we wrap up, I don't know if I've missed something Something you want to share uh, in regards with the trans green transport system. Uh -huh, okay, yeah. So green transport system, just as I did mention, is a whole compendium of a lot of issues. Eh? It's not only about mm -hmm. uh, moving from one point to another. But it's a whole issue. It, it, it emerges from manufacturing these uh, tools that we are using for transport, mm -hmm. uh, how we even use them, how we utilize them, and all that. And even green transport is actually even a concept in the shipping industry. Mm. And as we speak now in the COP28 that happened last year, the shipping industry also came up and said, we want to also play part in trying to reduce our, our carbon footprint from the shipping industry. Okay. Because as ships, uh, you know, sail, sail on, the, uh, on our oceans, they also emit a lot of carbon. True. So the ship industry came, came on board and said, we also want to play part. So 
For the green transport, it's a very good concept because it ultimately leads to a green, serene, very quiet and very, uh, you know, uh, nice city where one would want to live in. But again, it's, it's very hectic to deal with it when already we are in this uh, already stage like Nairobi, for instance. So new towns that are coming up, I would really wish that they embrace the aspect of green transport. And by embracing the, the aspect of green transport, you are talking of uh, infrastructural development. So that when the, the city or the towns are being planned, the guys who are in charge of planning are doing all that, then they have that mentality of uh, a, an inclusive road where now each and every person gets a chance to use our roads. Because the number one issue is about safety. How are we safe even if you are... Even if I'm telling people to embrace cycling as a means of transport, mm -hmm. what about our, saf our safety? You know? okay. So as, as cities plan, as towns plan, design roads, they should have uh, the notion or they should have the, <coughs> the direction of an inclusive planning system where they engage uh, road users, they engage uh, cyclists, they engage uh, pedestrians when... Uh, <coughs> When they're designing their, their roads. And this one is not only even in, uh, in transport. It's even in the, in the urban fabric when we are designing our communities. How do we ensure that communities are taking a big role in, in our planning? When mm. they're planning their settlements, okay. how ensure that community voices are also included in the planning aspects? Yeah. I'll, I'll leave it at that particular. Okay, that's Thanks. very sufficient. <coughs> I mean, I, I hope you have taken something from this conversation yeah. and known the importance yeah. of uh, having green transport system, the importance of cycling, you know, it's not a poor man's uh, <coughs> you know, system of transport. It's a mode of transport that will be beneficial to you and to the whole nation, to the whole universe when we talk about matters of climate change. Mm -hmm. And for this conversation, we were joined by Evans, Ad, uh, sorry, Evans Abondo, who's an environmentalist championing for uh, environmental uh, rights Okay, environmental rights advocate and founder of Kisomo Bike Club talking yeah. to us on this topic. Thank you very much, Evans, for Thank coming you on so board. Much, yeah. We appreciate it. Okay, so you. now we're going to take a short break and then we'll be back with an interview on Matters Entertainment. Stick with us.